All right, time to break it all down. We got three football gurus. We're going to look at some key plays. We start with the OG with Olin. Big play in the Bears game today. They're moving the ball pretty well, right? Or on their first drive. Yeah. Fourth and one. Fake a toss to Cordero Patterson. Inside handoff to Montgomery. Almost the same play. They ran against the Saints. Mm -hmm. A little different, but almost the same kind of dive play. They got 38-yard gain. Uh, if you're the Chicago Bears, what you've been seeing a lot of lately is run stunts. As Lance knows, we're going to put him in A gap, put him in the B gap. Linebacker fills the B gap, changes his responsibility. On film study, you hopefully by film study, you know immediately you come to the line of scrimmage, this guy's legs back. This guy's legs back, right leg up. Immediately you think the only thing they can do is slant left out of this, mm -hmm. right? So you got to stay big, stay big here. Center, come here, put your head right in the V of this guy's neck, blow him up. You know he's coming to you. Take his head off. Mm. Uh, that hurts, by they, the way. They <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Misses him here. Comes inside here. Causes all kind of havoc in here. Oh, yeah. See it? Head down. You don't expect it. Nice job by tight end getting his head across. Right? See, you don't want to be looking away here. You want to put your, put your head right in his head. Give him some chin music. This foot has to stay big here. If you're a Fetty, you got to stay big. You're a big man. You don't want to put your feet together. You got to stay big. Slow that foot down. Stay big. Start to walk him off the line this way. Montgomery can hit it right in here for one yard. Instead, he penetrates in here. Tackles giving as much body presence as he can. You just can't be looking like this with your head down. Did not expect a stunt. To me, that's, a, that's, that, that, that's not good because that's all you've been getting is run stunts inside to stop your run game. If they show you guys yeah. on fourth and one, if they show you a base, can we go back to the first picture? On uh, fourth and one, if we can't get back to it, on fourth and one, if you're a lineman and they show you a base look, it's line stunts all mm -hmm. day long. Yeah. They're not going to line. You guys know on defense, yeah. you're not, if they show you an easy look, here's an easy first down for you guys. Mm -hmm. You're going <laughs> to get some kind of stunt out of there, and that's what they got. And they got beat by it again. They're going to keep seeing it. There Here it go. is. Look how clean this looks for you. Mm. They're not staying like that. No, no way. Take a look at them. Look at the D line. I mean, the, we're not talking about some massive guys, right? So when it comes down to that short yardage, you're going to move them or they're going to get moved off the ball. Mm. So it, it's just looking at them. They're going to move and they're going to shift. But Olin, does it have anything to do with it? And I, I was talking about this earlier as if I knew about offensive line, but the continuity of the offensive line coming together, oh, for sure. this for right sure. here is a problem for them because they haven't played together. For sure, but, but the problem for me is if I go back to the Carolina game, to the Atlanta game, to uh -huh. the New Orleans game, mm -hmm. it's over and yeah. over again, right? Yeah. Sure. That doesn't mean you don't get beat, but look, this guy's stance is screaming. I'm yeah. going to my, I'm going this way. Yeah, I'm going to my left. We used to call blood in here. Blood in the there's water. an alert. Yeah, blood uh -huh. in the water means some kind of blitz or stunt is coming. Mm -hmm. Everybody slow down. Stay big. Don't give him cracks. Right. So he's got to know as soon as the guy moves, you can't drop your head, bring your feet together like we saw on the last play <clears throat> and they get beat here. Obviously, uh, you can argue with the inside with your fourth center with a uh, seventh round rookie. Why are you running inside? But I think they're trying to run behind a Fetty who'd had a decent first two or three games, kind of taking a step back lately. But run stunts, blitzes, mm -hmm. continue to, to, to frustrate the offensive line, the run game, and the whole offense in general. It's going to keep yep. happening. All right, Lance, Roquan Smith had another strong game. He got a sack of Ryan Tannehill in the first half. Yep. So take us through what happened on that play. Okay. Well, I'm going to need uh, – here we go. So this front right here, we defensively, we call this a load front. And we're doing all of this right here, right here, so that we can get a one-on-one -on -one or a two-on-one -on -one with this linebacker and this, uh, this uh, running back. So with this load front, you got, you got to look. Now the, this offensive line has to account for everybody that's over here on, in, the, in this box area. So you have one, two, three, four, five guys for one, two, three, four guys on this side. Um, <clears throat> and as Olin had said in the snap of the ball, you have to get ready for some sort of stunt or some sort of movement. So you're probably going to get a blood call, and then when he moves, you're going to get a gang, 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 gang. 
<laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, man, was it? Not bad. They got to communicate. They got to yell game. That's a fight. You don't yell game. That's a fight. Right, right. <laughs> and you have these two wide guys out here that you're tackling your guard are going to have to account for, which is going to open this hole wide open with uh, your back who has to uh, block inside out. And on that block inside out, he's going to have to pick which, which uh, linebacker he wants to go through first. Typically, you want to lead him one way so that it, and, it, and uh, lead an uh, alley so it's tight for your backside guy. But here, they kind of knock him over and, uh, and disrupt and, uh, and clear it up for Roquan uh, to get that sack. Great play call. Yeah, it's great, a very nice great play call. Opens wide up. You see uh, Roquan's quick inside. Um, Danny Trevathan's uh, outside. <clears throat> Roquan just defeats the block and gets to him before uh, before Danny can we, get there. We actually saw Trevathan make a couple plays down the field. You feel yep. like the last three weeks he's been healthier, he's been quicker, he's been better. I think he looks younger. Uh, I think for the first, uh, you know, three, three, four games, people were talking about his age, and I said, I don't think it's his age. You know, I think he's been hurt. You know, so over these last couple games, it looks like he's been healing a lot better. Um, and obviously, you can see by his play, he's playing better too. <clears throat> All right, why don't we wow. move to our guy, Alex Brown. You noticed Chuck Pagano was mm -hmm. being more aggressive. We had Wani here who said, hey, man, he can't be too aggressive because yep. the offense, if they get beat on a blitz, mm -hmm. can't react and come back. So what did you say? I, I think so, he said so, the hell with so that. So a coach That's is what coming I for a coach? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I'm, I think, I think he said the hell with that. He's going to run his defense. That's what I think he did. And today, the, the big question today was how are you going to stop Derrick Henry, right? So how do you stop this guy? And the type of defense they run, some of the guys on the inside, they have a gap and a half. And when you do a gap and a half, sometimes you get caught. We saw early in the season, you got two guys in one gap. When you blitz, everybody takes a gap. And it's that gap sound. And now if the guy comes in your gap, you make the tackle and you're good. So him bringing the blitz or bringing certain blitzes where you see the safeties coming down, they're filling all the gaps and there's nowhere for Henry to run. Outside of that, I want to say 20 some yard, 30 yard run he had late. He didn't do much. No, no, no. He did very little. They did in a really game. good job with yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Now he did open up with the play action. He did open up those linebackers coming down. Some of those plays for AJ Brown behind them, but my gosh, they did a really good job against him today. And I think it had everything to do with the way Pagano and his um, crew approach this game. So yeah, credit, credit the defensive line too, you know, without Roy Robinson Harris, right? Mm -hmm. Without Jenkins. And that I think mm -hmm. his name was McCullers. Yes, McCullers, McCullers showed up. He showed up, uh, mm -hmm. took up two blockers, kind of a guy that um, Roquan and Chavathan, as you know, Lance, as a mm -hmm. linebacker, has been missing, holding up one or two guys, big mm -hmm. guy in the middle. And that defense, the last two weeks now, except for um, Kamara's two 20-yard runs, yeah. really stout mm -hmm. against the run, which was kind of their Achilles yeah. heel Abs early for the on. first four Absolutely. or five weeks. And you mm -hmm. saw Mario Edwards get another sack today. I mean, the guy continues to play. Against um, uh, the guy they lost today, but against maybe the best left guard in the NFL in Saffold. So, a mm -hmm. uh, big-time sack. You know, yeah. sometimes it matters who you're beating. Who you're putting, you're and he beat Saffold, who's a very yep. good football player. And the same thing on this one. I mean, it's a totally different play, but I think they were doing the same. They bring... They bring the safe. Uh, this is uh, Johnson right here. You got Johnson inside, and you got what? Not what is that? Eight in the box? One, three, six, uh, nine in the box. You got nine, pretty much, and you're gonna stop this guy right here. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is, when you do this, you're putting a lot of pressure on Fuller out there. You're putting a lot of pressure on him. Or if it was flipped, you'd be putting a lot of pressure on Johnson down here. That hey guys, y'all gotta make your money today. Just you got to make your money. Just in case you guys are wondering, when when play for the Chicago Bears, this was standard operating procedure. <laughs> yes. you know, what we saw on every down. <laughs> yes. yes, it was. <laughs> this is Absolutely. pretty. Absolutely. They should look up and see goal line no matter where we were on the field. <laughs> <laughs> you look at the defense, like, hey guys, this is first and ten. You understand that, right? They got ten hey, in the box. Hey, hey, yeah. we, yeah, hey, yeah. we yeah. might pass. Yeah. We might. Yeah. <laughs> no chance. Shoot. But no, they did a good job. I thought. I thought they tackled. Um, some games we see them not tackling very well, um, but today they did everything really well to stop that guy right there, and they did. All right, so then I want to go back to, before we hear from Coach Nagy, the fake punt, mm -hmm. and Matt is looking down at his play sheet. They run the fake punt, mm -hmm. and we'll hear Matt explain it, but before we do, can you please explain to me when you do that how you don't have your play call ready to go on the next down? You have to take a timeout. 
Now, uh, two, yeah. two things could have happened, right? Yeah. Two, he could have called the personnel, mm -hmm. and then somebody didn't get on the field. So mm -hmm. once he calls the personnel, every coach for their position, usually it's the wide receiver, running mm -hmm. backs, right, because they're in and out tight mm -hmm. ends. He calls the personnel, and, and people got to get in the game, get on the field. And this is just the lack of concentration we've been seeing from the Bears now for maybe three or four weeks. Look, uh, Jimmy Graham, I think, I think he's been more than what a lot of us thought he would be when he got here. Mm -hmm. Played decently, plays really well in the red zone. Uh, we can't have false starts out of a guy in his 11th or 12th year. You can't in fourth and one. You yeah. can't be the guy jumping off sides. We can't have personnel problems. We talked about it with this offense. Yes, they almost have to be perfect. Yes, and they have mm -hmm. to give max effort for them to be efficient. This is also where him being moving away, moving those calls away for another OC, where his his uh, offensive prowess could help. You know, in giving ideas to the offensive coordinator. Hey, Correct. You know, what would you think about this and feeding right. certain ideas? Instead of being buried in the cart. Right.